Hey all, now once again from the Overtalker magazine. Let's not waste any time and get right to it. G-Skill is back with the Royal Series, looking better than ever, and of course, faster than ever before. This is the first of two sets of Z5 Royal Memory I'll be looking at within the next calendar month. This kit, the Neo SKU I share a name with, is for the AMD platform, specifically targeting moderate to low frequencies but at super low latencies. The kit in question comes with the expo setting of DDR5 6000, CL28 363696 at 1.4 volts. Of course, these are single sided DIMMs using a Rich Tech PMIC and Hynix 16 gigabit ADI ICs. Nothing unusual here, but what is important to potential buyers are the looks and, of course, the performance. On Amazon, this kit is currently retailing for $149, but locally, well, I just can't tell you that right now because the official G-Skill retailer in SA, Woodware, doesn't have any kit in stock. However, I was told that if, or rather when they are back in stock, the memory should be around 3,100 Rand or thereabouts. A more than fair amount to ask for what you will see is a pretty decent kit. Now, the DDR4 generation of Trident Royal memory looked alright, but in comparison with the DDR5 or Z5 version, it's clear which kit is newer. One of the key changes in the heatsink design is getting rid of those, remember those edges that would literally make you bleed? Yeah, well, those are gone. The edges are rounded and better polished, and it also actually makes the sticks look a whole lot better. For me personally, I actually prefer the RGB off or in single color mode, but I can understand when people want it with the multiple rainbows and all of that. And still, the RGB lighting works great and comes across in an epic way through the crystal diffuser. Where visual flair goes, the Trident Z5 Royal Neo kits actually guess it right. There's a certain elegance with this model or this generation rather that make the kit seem a whole lot more expensive and a whole lot more sophisticated than it actually is. Keep in mind as well, these also come in gold. In isolation, I think the gold sticks are perhaps even more visually appealing, but when installed in a motherboard, the silver models probably fit in better whereas the gold variant can look a bit out of place depending on the rest of the machine components. Visuals aside, I had high hopes for this memory. Keep in mind, G-Skill isn't selling frequency here, but low latencies. So had G-Skill opted for, let's say, remember those 16 gigabit m ICs, like the old ones? Do they even make those actually? I would have understood perfectly, but fortunately, G-Skill opted for the more popular a ICs that regularly do over 8,000 on many retail kits. While this is a non-event for Intel platforms, it is only in the last six, no, let's say only in the last nine to 12 months that DDR5-8000 has been reliable enough for vendors to actually sell DDR5 kits for the AM5 platform. To this end, I did manage DDR5-8000 on these sticks, but they were not stable at the default 1.4 volts. 1.45 gave me some headroom to play with, but ultimately, when doing some memory stress tests, I would generate errors. And this is using known settings that work on other G-Skill A die kit modules. So with AMD, we all know that the sweet spot is DDR5-6000 or 6400, right? However, at 6400, I had to loosen the primary timings to CL30-373796, which as you know, is slower in absolute latency terms than CL28-6000. What I found more interesting, however, was actually DDR5-5600, which I could run at 1.4 volts, but CL26 34 34 38. This setting is, for the most part, just as fast as 6000 CL28, but we'll be getting to that next. So, testing for the memory was done with the AMD Ryzen 5 9600X on the recently reviewed Gigabyte X870E Aorus Elite Wi Fi 7, all of which is powered by the XPG Fusion ATX 3.0 1600 watt PSU. Footage for the G Skill memory was shot in the Montec King 95 Pro cooled by the Hyperflow ARGB 360mm AIO, and all of this, of course, is available at Woodware. First up, we have IDA64 memory bandwidth. You'll notice that the best bandwidth figures are actually provided by DDR5-5600 at CL26 and not Expo at DDR5-6000 CL28. I actually didn't expect it, but the numbers don't lie. We will see this sort of back and forth between the Expo and the tuned CL26-5600 settings going forward. Next up is memory latency, and we see once again, CL26-5600 is actually quicker than CL28-6000. But then again, this should not surprise you, because in absolute latency terms, it's 9.3 nanoseconds for CL28-6000 and 
2 nanoseconds for CL2656 Sun. We then have V-Ray 6 and Cinebench R23. Honestly, looking at these figures, there's not much of a difference, if at all, between these three settings. Over an extended period of time, of course, the advantage of the Expo settings would add up. But I can imagine those who use these applications are not going to really want to bother with anything about 5600. That, however, doesn't hold true for H.264 encoding in Handbrake. Here, there's a difference of almost 10 seconds between CL36-5600 and CL26-5600. As flattering as they may be for the tuned CL26 settings, Expo pretty much nets you the same performance gain over the standard 5600 CL36. Geekbench 6 responds well to memory performance, and the results speak for themselves. There's almost 1000 points gained from going from DDR5 5600 CL36 to 5600 CL26. And this is in both the multi-core and single-core results, both showing very similar scaling. Next up is Geekbench 3's memory test. And the lead here goes to the Expo settings, with that combination of memory bandwidth and latency proving to be more effective in this benchmark. Both the Expo and the OC settings, however, offer a significant performance jump over the default settings of 5600 CL36. 7-zip benchmark is the next test, and to be honest here, I thought the differences between all three settings would be much larger than they are. Either way, 2000 points when overclocked isn't bad, especially when you consider that the transaction rate actually hasn't gone up between the worst performance and the best performance. Superby 32M is another one that surprised me. Yes, they are within spitting distance from one another, but the Expo settings actually pipped the optimized and sub-timing tuned CL26-5600 settings. Quite surprised by that. We then move on to Y-Cruncher 2.5B, which reverses the positions, placing the CL26 setting ahead of the Expo settings by nearly a whole second. Finally, we get to the gaming benchmark. So we'll start with Hitman World of Assassination. Here we see a massive difference between the default CL36-5600 and the tuned CL26-5600 settings. 16 FPS higher in the 1% load and 15 FPS higher in the average frame rate. A close to 8% gain in performance from simply tuning memory down to CL26-5600. With Forza Horizon 5, however, we hardly see anything here. Honestly, these results are well within the margin of error, so I'd not read much into this. Performance is by and large the same here. Dying Light 2 expresses the differences between the various memory settings well enough. It's one of the tests that give the advantage to the Expo settings, with 1% lows up by 11%, while the average frame rate improved by 21 frames per second when comparing to the default setting. So there you have it. You've seen the performance figures for yourself now. For the going price, I think the performance is rather neat. Looking at the aesthetics, the ICs, the performance that you get from the kit, even at Expo settings, this is pretty good in terms of memory and pricing. Yes, it can also run higher speeds as well, because I have no doubt this memory will do, I mean, at the very least, DDR5 7600. There's just absolutely no chance that it can't do that. So at $149 or 3,100 branded woodware, for instance, you can't fault this memory. Yes, you can buy other ADI based kits that would likely be able to handle the same Expo settings at the same voltages. The difference is, however, is that those are not guaranteed while these ones are. So for my first set of Trident Z5 Royal Neo sticks, I must say these are really appealing when you factor in the price. You can do a lot worse than these when it comes to performance, but I'm not sure you can do a whole lot better than these when it comes to the aesthetic element, or at least that's how I feel. All right, then let me know your thoughts on the memory below. Until the next time, guys, share, like, subscribe and all that good stuff. I've been Nero. Take care of yourselves and peace.